What's up, beautiful ladies and handsome men? I am not sure what's true or false in this story. I take gossip, tea, rumor, and scandal from yesteryear, from online, from word of mouth, from books, and I ball it up and I tell you guys a story. Now, let's get to it. Honey, let me go ahead and give a shout out to my fave, Bright Sellers. Right now, they are giving the Says So Squad 50% off of your first six bottle box of wine. Go ahead and click the link in the description to get started. Nothing you could do could make me untrue to my God, my God. Nothing you could buy could make me tell a lie to my God, my God. I gave my guy my word of honor to be faithful. And I'm gonna, you best be believing I won't be deceiving my God. Get ready for the hot, messy, scandalous life of Motown's first queen, Miss Mary Wells. Let's get to it. Mary Esther Wells was born in Detroit, Michigan on May the 13th, 1943. Her mother's name was Geneva Campbell Wells and her father's name was Arthur Wells. Well, hold on a minute. Most people say that her dad's name was Arthur Wells, but Mary herself had anybody sitting up there giving her the side eye when she came out and said that her daddy was white. Not just white, an Italian white man. Mary Wells' childhood friends have not hesitated to come out of the woodwork saying that uh, Mary was lying. Now, even if Arthur Wells was Mary's true father, uh, gossip claims that the man was rarely ever around. And when he was, the only thing he was good for was being very nice and very sweet and kind during the daytime and then getting drunk at night and beating the living daylights out of Mary's mama. Now, as a child, Mary Wells was said to be a very sickly little girl and some sources even say that she was very sickly throughout her life. But listen to this, she was really lucky to even have a life because gossip claims that one of those childhood illnesses almost took Mary out. The folks say that she had spinal meningitis at the age of two and she went blind, she went deaf, and she suffered from paralysis. By all accounts, this disease was supposed to kill Mary, but luckily she ended up surviving. And then at the age of 10, she had a severe bout with tuberculosis, but she ended up surviving that as well. Now, by the age of 12, Mary was healthy enough to start helping her mother clean people's houses and possibly even clean some businesses. And per gossip, Mary Wells hated this and she hated it so much because she said she remembered that in the winter time it would be freezing cold and she would have to kneel on these linoleum floors with a mop bucket like dipping her hand in the water and scrubbing the floor and her hands would be like frozen and her knees would hurt you know it was just something that she really didn't want to do she certainly didn't want to do it when she became an adult and so mary started thinking of things that she could do to take her far away from this life and one of the things that she thought was you know maybe i could become famous and and as Mary thought of what she could do, it was not long before she chose singing to be her profession. And it was while Mary had all of this going on that music groups started to pop up all over Detroit. Baby, every time you turned around, somebody was sitting up there slick headed to the side talking about some in the steel. But most, if not all of these groups at this particular time were made up of men and they were not too keen at all to let a female join their group. It just was not popular at this time. But this did not stop Mary from going to group to group to group trying to see if she can get in where she fit in. There was finally one male group that let Mary join and she came to the first practice and then they fired her the very next day. When Mary wanted to know just why she was fired like what she had done, uh, Gossip claims that the boy did not tell her but he told other people that the reason that he let Mary go is because on the first day of practice he started hearing his bandmates man look at the way she rocked them hips when she sing. Boy I sure do want to get a peek at her. I can't wait to get next to that furry kitten. And when the leader of the band heard this, he figured that she was going to cause all kind of jealousy and confusion and, you know, fights amongst the guys. And so he told Mary and her furry kitten to get lost. Mary didn't give up though. And before long, she'd be signed to the one and only Poems Got to Be Greased. Johnny Mae Matthews. 
Mary was ecstatic and she instantly saw her name in the stars until she realized that Johnny Mae Matthews didn't care about Mary or her singing. In fact, she'd pretty much signed Mary Wells on just to be another number under her record label. All of Johnny Mae's time, attention, and everything else went to a group of handsome young men named The Distance. And for those of you who don't know, The Distance went on to become The Temptations. But here poor Mary was stuck on a record label that really didn't even know that she existed. However, there was an upside to this. Because if the record label didn't know she existed, then the record label wouldn't notice if she left. Which is what Mary eventually ended up up doing but here she was again without a record label then something happened that changed her life forever she went to a show and she saw this young high yellow guy scream out my heart is crying crying and mary fell in love jackie wilson meant the world to mary will she fantasized about this man all the time and she hoped and dreamed that one day she would get his attention and what better way to get jackie wilson's attention as well as to prop herself up into the music business by writing jackie wilson a song so mary grabbed her pen she scribbled she thought she scribbled and then she thought some more and then she held the paper up to the sky and she had written a song called bye bye baby but now she ran into another problem just how in the heck was she going to be able to get this to Jackie Wilson? Well, rumor has it that Mary enlisted a guy named Robert Bateman. But to Mary's dismay, whatever connection that Robert Bateman had with Jackie Wilson, he no longer had that. But he did tell Mary that there's this other guy that she could possibly talk to and he could get the song to Jackie Wilson. And that's when Robert Bateman told Mary Wells about a guy named Barry Gordy. He also told Mary that she could find Barry at the 20 Grand Club, the most hoppingest, jumpingest place in Detroit at that time. Now, when Mary walks into the 20 Grand Club, she spots Barry Gordy. So she kind of stands up against the wall and she waits for Barry to be free. And as soon as he is free, Mary takes off kind of running, you know, like doing a fast run walk, trying to get to Barry. Well, Barry Shady Tail sees Mary coming and then he take off walking real fast down the hallway. Mary is not deterred at all. She comes up running behind him and she's like, Mr. Gordy, hi, my name is Mary Well. Barry keeps walking. Mr. Gordy, look, I've written a song for Jackie Wilson. Can you please help me? Barry keeps walking. It's a really good song. Look, Martha, Minerva, whatever your name is, I am a really busy man and I don't have time to listen to some home written song that you claim is good. Now get lost. But Mr. Gordy, I swear, I swear it's the best song. All right, all right. If it's so good, sing it right now. Baby, they say Mary didn't miss a beat and started singing right at that instant. And it's really two things that sells Mary Wells. It's her doe set eyes, and it's also this really soulful voice that she has. I always thought people was lying when they said that Mary Wells had a strong voice where she could kind of do the shouting type singing. But um, yeah, she actually does have that voice. If you guys go look up the song, Bye Bye Baby, I'm actually gonna put it in the description. The way Mary Wells sounds on that song is a whole lot different from the way that she sounds on my guy. And this is basically what Barry Gordy heard. So after uh, Mary stops singing, he tells her, how would you like to record that song for my label? And Mary is beside herself. Rumor has it that she starts hopping up and down, you know, her fuzzy head just bouncing everywhere. She could not wait to come to Barry's studio the next day. And when she did, he offered her a contract and they got her in the studio pretty much immediately to record Bye Bye Baby, which was released in 1960. And the song was not a smash, but baby, you better believe it definitely was a hit. It reached number eight on the Billboard R&B chart and number 45 on the pop chart. And this was excellent for a newcomer in the music business with her first song. So Barry Gordy knew that he had made the right choice. And from this point on, Mary Wells became a big focal point for Motown Records. And as she kept recording these songs that weren't necessarily smash hits, but they were pretty good hits, Mary started to see things change a little bit. People around her at Motown started to show her a little more respect. She started to see a lot of admiration as well as jealousy in the eyes around her, whether these be female or female eyes. Some of her early hits was a song named I'm Sorry, a song named I Don't Want to Take a Chance, and many more than that. Mary started to sense even more of an atmosphere change. She was now able to sometimes use other groups as her backup singers, sometimes uh, The Temptations, sometimes even The Supremes. She was also given access to uh, greater quality songs as well as greater quality writers. And this was wonderful because soon Mary would experience something that she had never experienced before. And this was a slump in her career. She 
did put out a few songs that really didn't do much at all. And even if they did make the charts, they were so low that nobody even cared or even noticed. But it was Barry Gordy that stepped in and was like, baby, I know you lying. The public ain't finna push Mary Wells to the side just yet. So he ended up taking from Mary, a talented writer by the name of Mickey Stevenson, and he ended up replacing Mickey with Smokey Robinson. And this decision right here is the reason that Barry Gordy is Barry Gordy. This is the reason that Barry Gordy was and still is a boss. Because Smokey wrote plenty of great songs for Mary Wells, but he wrote this one song that baby, if I turn on the radio right now, that song most likely is going to be on somewhere. And that song was called my guy. And to be honest, I don't even think Barry, Smokey, or Mary knew that this song was going to do the numbers that it did. But when I tell you that song did numbers, I mean it did numbers. Numbers like rising to number one on the Billboard and Cashbox chart. And remained in the top 40 of the charts for 13 weeks, even at one time knocking the Beatles out of the number one spot. The song went absolutely to the stratosphere, and Mary was now Motown royalty. Maybe they say Mary used to show up in Motown with her big old entourage with her head held high and just swoosh past everybody with them big elaborate updos. Said that Diana Ross, Martha Wells, and plenty other members of different girl groups used to just look at her. Just like, oh man, I wish I was her. That's gonna be me one day. But right now, at this moment, Mary Wells was an absolute star. And it has got to be said, honey, she was the very first queen of Motown. And cha, things went absolutely haywire from here. But before we get into that, we got some early hot messery we need to get into first. The scandal, child. The scandal. Let's get to it. Now, baby, listen to this. The folks say that when Mary Wells was a teenager, the girls hated to see her coming and the boys loved it, honey, because they said baby doll was fine. Honey, they said Mary used to have on them doggone mohair skirts and said that all the boys would be chasing her. And baby, you know they said that Mary wasn't turning nothing down. Old girl was going the distance and that's because she was messing with one one of the distant. Child, they say that when she was signed with Johnny Mae Matthews, one of those guys from the distance caught her eye. Well, somebody went to go get the broom from the broom closet. And when they got close to the door, they heard all kind of knocking going on. They didn't open the door, but they definitely waited around to see just what was going on and just who was doing it. Honey, how about they say a few minutes later, Mary Wells came walking out first. And then a couple of minutes after that, Otis Williams came walking out the broom closet. Check me out though. The folks say that even though Mary Wells wanted to keep this a secret, that Otis Williams was telling everybody. And Otis wasn't the only one because this other guy, let's just call him Bilson Stickett, the folks say that he was messing around with Mary Wells and he also was telling everybody about it. Oh honey, listen to this steamer. This one right here took me out. At one point in time, Mary Wells was working with Stevie Wonder. And I'm talking about little Stevie Wonder, 13 year old Stevie Wonder. Honey, say that they were practicing on a piano together and then Stevie started to play with one hand. And so Mary was very impressed until she found out that the other hand was down squeezing her booster. And they say Mary was shocked at first, like she couldn't believe that this little boy was doing this. But then since she didn't say anything, gossip claims that Stevie's hand started to move up to her boobs. And that's when Mary was like, hey, hold on, hold on. Oh, little Stevie, uh-uh, we're not finna do this. And baby, you know it ain't a Motown story without a little bit of Diana Ross's pettiness. Because why come they said that every time that Motown Review was on the bus, Diana Ross would sit behind Mary Wells and she would put her bare feet up in the back of Mary Wells' chair. Sitting there moving her feet all around, doing her toes like this. Baby said Mary Wells' wigs used to stay scooped to the front like this. Gossip claims that she used to turn around all the time and hit the heck out of Diana Ross's feet. But the folks say Diana wasn't no pushover, honey. Said that whenever Mary used to hit her, they used to get into it like a screaming, yelling match. And it never did come to blows, but a lot of people thought it would. And the person that spilled this tea said it used to be stinking on them Motown buses, honey. Them folks said it was musty armpits and stinking bodies everywhere and said that sometimes the odor uh, caused fights on the bus. Like people would get mad because somebody was real stinking. And just to let you know, nobody got on the bus stinking. What would happen is that they would be on the bus 
dressed for several days. So they didn't really have time to take showers and stuff like this. So unfortunately, everybody was musty and stinking. And gossip claims that a lot of times they went on stage and if those audience members could have got super close, that uh, Motown Review wouldn't have had no fans. Now let me tell you about this messy drop of tea, honey. The story says that it was after a show and the Motown Review were getting on the bus. While they were piling on, they heard a woman in the distance say, you know, Mary Wells, you trifling bee. So everybody looks to the side and there is this woman charging at them. And so everybody's trying to rush on the bus because obviously this woman is crazy. Unfortunately, Mary in particular cannot make it onto the bus in time. Maybe that woman gets up to that line and she is squaring up. B, I'm about to beat your A. Always finna be over for you, Mary Wells. She is saying Mary Wells' name, but she's squaring up to Kim Weston. And so Kim Weston is kind of looking over at Mary like, you know, is you gonna say something? Maybe they say that Mary Wells ain't said a mumbling word. Said that woman hauled off and slapped Kim Weston and took the wig off her head. Child said Kim was sitting up there looking bald-headed and stunned when it was all over with. And do not ask me where Mary Wells was when this fight was over, but child, I imagine that Mary Wells was sitting up there on that doggone bus looking out the window at Kim looking like this meme right here. Now Motown of course is a gold mine. They have so many rumors, so many stories so we can never be sure if that story was true but I tell you one thing if it was true baby the folks say that Mary Wells got her karma back for sitting up there and letting Kim Weston take them slaps of fury. Listen at this. Rumor has it that on this story once again the Motown review were fouling on the bus and the difference in this story is that Mary was actually at the front of the bus about to go up the bus steps. Well, suddenly they started hearing this very loud popping sound that sounded just like gunshots. In fact, the review thought it was gunshots. So all hell broke loose. Mary was trying her best to hurry up and run up the steps, but her foot slipped. Cha, them folks said that Mary Wells' head should have looked like Gumby when it was all over with, baby. Honey said that it was so many feet that stepped on Mary that it felt like somebody did the two-step and the cha-cha slide, baby. But luckily, when it was over with, uh, Mary got up without a scratch. Now regarding them saying that she was a little hot in the tail, there are several rumors that say that, uh, you know, Mary Wells got around, just like every doggone body else in Motown. But they say that it was a different kind of hold em with uh, Mary Wells, because uh, gossip claims that with Mary Wells, it was more of a, she wanted a man around. You know, she didn't feel complete unless she had a man. And this is alleged, but gossip claims that she liked to be the damsel in distress. She wanted a man to take care of her and take up for her. You know what I mean? So she really lived that old fashioned sentiment. Now it's alleged that the first super serious relationship that she was ever in was with a man named Herman Griffin. They say that Motown employed this guy to be Mary Wells' chauffeur, as well as to be her band leader. And so Somebody said that Herman Griffin used to be behind Mary Wells while she was singing. They said that he would be directing the band and then he would start turning cartwheels and backflips and uh, gossip claims that the audience kind of thought that was stupid a little bit. But back to the story, uh, rumor has it that Herman and Mary spending this time together became very close and so very soon they started messing around with each other and then soon after that they got married. Well when Barry Gordy found out about this, he was livid and Barry Gordy is said not to be the only one who felt like this. Some of Mary's friends felt like that Herman just acted a little bit too old for Mary, like he was bossy, you know, said he used to be cussing her out, treating her like a child, and they didn't like that. But let me tell you, baby, Mary Wells didn't give a doggone who didn't like it. She liked Herman, and she was happy in her marriage. That is until... Herman and Mary were invited to a certain party and Mary said that she did not feel like going so Herman went by himself. Honey, these folks said that Herman got drunk and baby said Herman started acting like he had lost his doggone mind. Y'all know them real thirsty wild men like they get super duper drunk. You walk by in the club and he wiping the sweat from his brow. Woo wee! Thank God for that booty meat right there. Come here gal. Y'all know the type. Well, luckily, most of the women at this party were said to be turning Herman down, and that is because most of the women at this party were Mary Wells' friends. Well, honey, there was this one woman who walked through there, fine, with all these curls in her head, and she took Herman up on his offer. And honey, Herman dang near undressed that doggone woman on the dance floor, child. He was stumbling across his feet and everything trying to take that woman to the back room. Well, baby, you know that Mary Wells' friends could not wait to get home and call Mary to tell 
of her what was going on. And so uh, per gossip, Mary and Herman divorced in the year of 1963. Now y'all know I told y'all that in the Diana Ross video that uh, there were rumors out here that Diana Ross and Brian Holland were messing around. As a matter of fact, remember that story about Brian Holland's wife coming to the club and beating Diana Ross up? Well baby, they said the wife should have been putting the hands on Mary Wells as well because gossip claims that Brian Holland and Mary Wells were messing around. In fact, Mary Wells went around telling people that Brian Holland had asked her to marry him. But baby, I know she was shamed because when Brian Holland was asked about this, he said that he didn't know what the heck Mary Wells was talking about. He said, you know, he probably got what he could get, but he ain't never said nothing about marrying her behind. Now, honey, when Otis Williams was running around telling everybody about how good Mary was, one of the folks he probably told must have been David Ruffin because, child, you know they said David was lined up for a little taste and ended up getting several samples because word on the street is that Mary Wells and David Ruffin dated uh, for like six months. They could not stay together because they were both always trying to bust each other upside the head because they were both very jealous of each other. Now to touch back on Mary Wells' career, after My Guy, she was once again the uh, solidified queen of Motown. But something happened after this. Mary started to think of money and started to think of why she was not making more money. She was the hit maker. She was Motown's star. So why was her uh, checks kind of empty? And they say that when Mary Wells started to ask Barry Gordy about this, Barry Gordy would do things like, you know, Mary, you sitting up here in my office talking about more money. Girl, have you seen that new car outside I just bought you? And there's also this time that they say that uh, Motown threw Mary Wells a big 21st birthday party, like a huge party, and Barry Gordy came out with a fur stole or a fur uh, wrap. And I say fur, I actually think it was a mink. Whatever the case, word on the street is that these gifts were things that Barry tried to do to keep Mary from asking for more money. Well, of course, Mary Wells was not fooled by this behavior. So as she kept asking for more money and Barry wouldn't necessarily turn her down, but he would kind of sidestep the subject like I just told you, Mary started to feel like, you know, maybe I should just leave Motown. And Mary was so much of a queen to Motown that when she told Barry Gordy, hey, I'm thinking about leaving, Barry told her, come to my office and let's meet and let's talk about this. Baby said Mary Wells told him, uh, no sir, you come to my apartment. I don't feel like moving right now. Child, once again, Barry Gordy, shiny church shoes walking over there to Mary Wells' apartment. And by the time Barry Gordy left, Mary pretty much had made up her mind that she really was going to leave Motown. And so Mary's lawyers came in and they negotiated her out of her contract. And in doing that, Mary made the biggest mistake of her life. And that was leaving Motown and her lawyers made the biggest mistake of their lives. And that was the fact that they were not arguing hard enough to keep Mary Wells' royalties off of the songs that she had already made. Per gossip, the reason why that she really didn't make a fuss about these royalties is because she felt like the songs were over. She had no idea that when the 80s and the 90s came around that there was going to be this big revival and nostalgia for old time uh, Motown music. She didn't know that. So she felt like, you know, the songs had fallen off the charts anyway. Nobody were ever going to really hear them again. So what royalties? Honey, like I said, one of the biggest mistakes of her life. But as of right now, Mary Wells does not see any of that because when she finally did leave Motown, she went right over to 20th Century and she ended up signing a contract for $250,000, a huge amount for that time. Mary was on top of the world, said she was always shopping, trying on clothes. You know, she had to have the best apartment in all of Detroit. She'd take trips to New York, dated several men, just had the time of her life. And now that Mary had pretty much all of this freedom to move around like she wanted to and to travel and stuff like she wanted to, there was one man that she really, really wanted to get next to. Mary ended up going to a Jackie Wilson concert and she ended up being asked to come back stage. Well, when she did, Jackie Wilson, of course, wasted no time putting the moves on Mary. Mary thought this was cute, went home with Jackie Wilson, started a relationship with Jackie Wilson, and then never left his apartment again. Baby, they said Jackie Wilson was so doggone controlling, he told Mary Wells that he didn't want to see her outside. His apartment is where she needed to stay. He said it was a nice apartment. There was no reason for her to leave. He also started snorting cocaine and drinking alcohol in front of her. And baby, 
baby, the folks say that sometimes she'll get a little grabby child, a little jerky on her. And she didn't really know what to think of Jackie. But there was one thing that she could think of, and that was leaving him. She wanted to escape this hell. And so one day when Jackie left, Mary packed up all of her stuff and she went back to her own apartment. Jackie Wilson came over there. Kaplow! Where Mary is? Baby Mary Wells was sitting up there looking just like that, hiding up under the bed, praying for dear life, child. And thankfully, the friend was able to convince Jackie Wilson that Mary was not there, you know, that she had not seen Mary. And so uh, they said that Jackie Wilson was like, I'ma be back, and then he left. After Jackie, Mary started dating record producer Carl Davis. Honey, they say this man Carl Davis was head over heels for Mary, but she just did the most. Since he was a producer, of course, he had to work with different music groups. Well, Gossip claims that one time he was working with a music group called The Peaches. Said Mary Wells showed up at the studio telling us something. Listen here, Carl is my man. So keep your paws off of him and really ain't got to worry about it because can't none of y'all afford him no way. And that ain't the only time Mary Wells came walking through there showing her tail. Said that one time Carl Davis was working in California and Mary Wells had taken a surprise flight over to see him. She knocks on the hotel door room and Carl is in the room with another woman, but this woman is his coworker and he wasn't attracted to her and they were just sitting there talking about business. Well, either Carl was lying or Mary must've got some kind of sense of something because Mary went and got a bottle baby cracked it on the table and then started running after Carl Davis but fortunately Mary did not chase him into the hallway so Carl was able to get downstairs to the hotel lobby and he requested a different room and he told the people down at the desk do not tell what room he's in but when Mary realized that Carl was not coming back to this room she went downstairs and she did talk to the clerk and the clerk told her I'm not allowed to give you his room number and Mary said okay then you want to play like that that's cool she got on the elevator and went to each floor running down the hallway carl where are you baby carl forgive me i love you just making a scene child but throughout all of this craziness carl davis still loved mary wells very very much so much that he ended up giving her a three carat diamond engagement ring but then something happened that messed the whole thing up Carl Davis found out that Mary was sleeping around with Cecil Womack. And this right here is the story that I know that most of y'all came for. And honey, we got to break it down because I found out that things didn't go as simply or as simple as I thought it did. Gossip claims that she had first seen all of the Womack brothers um, in like 1962, 1963. And that's when they were singing on the same bill together. Mary was looking all of the brothers over while they sang and per gossip, she pointed at Curtis and she was like oh that one right there is kind of cute I like that one so Mary sent a friend to go get Curtis and the friend told Curtis hey Mary Wells wants to see you and Curtis starts blushing he's like you know she wants to see me and the friend is like yeah she wants you to come to her room right now and Curtis is just like hi Miss Wells and Mary is like miss what you mean miss how old you think I am Curtis is so shame he doesn't even reply to this well eventually Mary is like I'm gonna get you one day well there were like two more shows where this happened where Mary saw Curtis you know she invited him back to her room and uh per gossip one of these times Cecil came back to the room with Curtis and allegedly Cecil Womack made up in his mind that day that Mary Wells was going to be his woman this boy ended up finding his way to almost every single performance that Mary Wells would give. Cecil would just show up by himself and he would always get an audience backstage with Mary. And so Mary would receive him but she would kind of be like, now Cecil, you know I like your brother Curtis. Yeah, but I like you. So what's up? And Mary would kind of shrug him off and kind of laugh him off because Cecil was the baby brother. You know what I'm saying? He was younger than Mary. Well, rumor has it there ended up being this big dance for all type of black entertainer. At the this dance Mary and Curtis dance together all night they are flirting you know Curtis is finally breaking out of his shell everything is good Cecil is at this dance as well and Cecil is fuming he is very upset he feels like Curtis is taking the woman that he's interested in well by the time Curtis gets home when he walks through the door his mama looking at him like this 
mm, I can't believe you. And so Curtis is like, mama, what's going on? Cecil didn't told me. He didn't told me how you sitting up there trying to take his girl. What's wrong with you? Why would you do your little brother like that? You know that boy like Mary. Cecil then went home crying to his mama. So it's alleged that when their mother was talking to Curtis, at the end, she told Curtis that you need to back up off of Mary. You know, let her be with Cecil. Well, once their mother told Curtis to back off, Cecil came very heavy handed. And Cecil was a very uh, determined young man. So he was coming on to her telling her why she should choose him. You know what I'm saying? Why she should become his girl. But remember when I told you that Mary Wells like wanted a man to take care of her, wanted a man to make decisions for her and all of this kind of stuff. Before long, Mary, she kind of just folded and she did start dating Cecil. And soon after they were dating, Cecil also used his mouthpiece to talk Mary Wells into marrying him. One of Mary Wells' friends said Mary told her on her wedding day, I don't want to do this. I don't want to walk down the aisle to marry him, but I, you know, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get out of it. And the friend told her, just call it off. Just stop it. And Mary was like, you know, I can't do that. Our families are here. She ended up walking down the aisle and she did marry Cecil Woman. And they say instantly, Cecil Womack dominated Mary Wells' life. At this time, not only was Mary Wells not allowed to leave the apartment, Gossip claims that Mary Wells couldn't even leave the bedroom of the apartment. Cecil kept her locked in a bedroom, said he controlled who she talked to, said he controlled who she saw. Baby Mary said that uh, Cecil used to get jealous if she talked to males or females. Hey y'all, I need to cut in here and say this before the next rumor. Uh, Friendly Womack was Cecil Womack's oldest brother, and this is what his wife said right here. Her Friendly Womack's wife, she used to just be peeking at him down the hallway like this, because when one of of them went to the bathroom the other one went with them and put on your helmet right here because gossip claims that not only was uh mary locked into the bedroom baby they said that she used to be slapped up and slapped out laid across the bed uh said that cecil used to beat the devil out of her and i didn't expand on this but after mary wells left motown even when she signed with 20th century uh mary wells did not do well at all her music was really not hitting on anything and so she would try to tour as much as she could but uh word on the streets is that a lot of times Cecil wanted to stop her from touring. Well, although Mary's situation might have been bad, um, she and Cecil did end up having three children. Hey y'all, I gotta cut in again and tell y'all some more information because another piece of this video is missing. But while Mary Wells is going through this with Cecil, gossip claims that some type of way she was able to carry on conversations with Curtis. You know, and she would always tell Curtis how she was feeling and how Cecil was treating her. And so they really developed a relationship. Well, baby said that one day Curtis sat hidden outside of Mary and Cecil's apartment building and waited for uh, Cecil to leave. As soon as Cecil left, Curtis comes walking up to the apartment door, knocks on the door, and when Mary answers it, walks up to her and is like, hey Mary, we can't deny this. You know what I'm saying? It's what it is. It should have been us. You need to just kiss me just to see if you feel something. Said Mary leaned in for that kiss. Honey, all you saw was the jackrabbit motion all over that doggone apartment. Said from that point on, every time Cecil left the apartment, Mary would find some type of way to be with Curtis. But see, where they messed up at is because Curtis was a married man too. And so people started to notice they put two and two together and honey said the whole family went off on Mary Will. How she gonna sleep with two brothers? The family was telling Curtis, you need to be with your family. You need to be back with us. Leave her alone. But it said that Curtis would not abandon Mary. He actually started to be in a relationship relationship with her and it was one of these nights that Curtis was over at home with Mary that Mary got into the shower and then she ended up taking a bunch of sleeping pills. She wanted to commit suicide because she messing around with two brothers. You know, she's broken up a family. Rumor has it that Curtis rushed her to the emergency room and Mary was in there probably for like two to three days and a lot of the Womack family did come to see her because she had been in their life for like over 10 years. They didn't want anything to really do with her but they didn't want her to take her life you know so a lot of them came to the hospital even Cecil was at the hospital and Curtis was kind of made to stand outside in the hallway well at one point Curtis was like F this that's my woman and so he charges into the hospital room and he sits on the side of the bed and it's Cecil on one side and Curtis on the other side and they are both talking to Mary and Cecil turns around to Curtis and he was like this is still my wife
wife, what are you doing? What you doing? Said, Mary said, Cecil, don't you talk to Curtis like that. And that's when Cecil was like, F both of y'all. Y'all can have each other. I'm done with this crap. And so he and Mary ended up getting a divorce shortly after that. And she started to be with Curtis for real, for real, full time in a uh, full-fledged relationship. And Mary also found out that Curtis was not all that she thought he was. He did put hands on her. In fact, gossip claims that they fought a lot. But if you let Curtis tell it, Mary was jumping on him first and he was just trying to defend himself. Especially when Mary started to drink and Mary did start to drink very heavily because she had got a lot of depression over her career. Not only was she drinking, pretty soon Mary Wells was doing heroin. And because she was doing heroin, this outweighed the good that was happening. And the good that was happening is that Curtis was actually letting uh, Mary Wells tour and take every single job that she could get. And baby, they said that Mary Wells used to show up at some of these performances with uh, like regular sundresses on. Her hair used to be kind of combed into one of them flat mushroom styles. It just didn't look like a celebrity was supposed to look. And she looked like she had had it. Now while Mary Wells was touring and she was looking like this, eventually something good did come of it. Um, it turns out that a man that was her fan was now making music and he took Mary to the side and he told her that he wanted to produce an album for her. And when he put together this album, he made sure that Mary Wells got promo shots that made her look absolutely gorgeous. Unfortunately, the album didn't really do that well, but what it did do is make Mary want to spruce herself back up. There was even more happiness in her life when she and Curtis finally had their own child together in 1986. But although Mary was all fixed up and she had her new baby girl, um, gossip claims that she really just could not fully stay off of the drug. And then something really weird happened probably about three months after their baby girl was born. And that is when Mary Mary Wells was set to perform in Toronto, but she never showed up. Not only did she never show up, nobody could get in contact with her. Well, honey, how about the day after the concert, gossip claims that Mary showed up to some news station in uh, Nevada saying that she had been kidnapped. She said that she was at the airport getting ready to fly to Toronto when two fans, a husband and wife team, drove up to Mary and Curtis. They asked her to get inside of the car. They even told her they had a song for her. When Mary listens to the song, she says, you know, guys, I'm not really recording music right now you know thank you but no thanks this husband locked the doors on her and gossip claims that even a gun was pulled and he told her you know me and my wife have driven this far you gonna sing this song lady and per Mary these people kept her and uh, Curtis in the car and drove all the way to Nevada with them and Mary says that when she got to Nevada she was able to talk to the guy and she told him you know please just let me and my husband go and so the guy eventually let her go well this story sounds ridiculous because Curtis Curtis came out in later years and said the story was ridiculous. He said the story was a straight up lie. He said that he and Mary could not make it to Toronto in time. And so for some reason, she made up this very odd lie. And this is not the only weird behavior from Mary Wells. There is certainly more weird behavior to come. Now around about 1990, 1991, Mary Wells started to lose her voice very easily. And she started to feel strained whenever she sang. At first, Mary ignored it. You know what I'm saying? She pressed on, but eventually, one day she laid down and she could not breathe at all. She felt her throat closing up on her. So she finally went to the doctor and they uh, diagnosed her with larynx cancer. From this point, Mary toured as much as she could and she also went and did a lot of speech engagements for a uh, cancer society until her voice just completely gave out. And doctors wanted to operate on Mary, but she did not want to do that because she wouldn't be able to sing anymore. And so she chose the route of radiation. Well, well, honey, when I tell you that things got weird during her hospital stay, baby, I mean stuff got weird. What? Child. Off screen, woo child, honey. For one thing, gossip claims that when Mary was having a particularly bad time, she was admitted into the hospital. The folks say that this woman has a tube down her throat. Why come gossip claims that Curtis Womack came to that woman's hospital bed, kissing her all on her neck, 
shoulders, and on her chest, trying to get some. Honey said the nurses walked in on them and was like, oh, you know, no, sir, you can't do this to her. You can't do this right now. Like, she's not well, sir. And the folks say that Curtis said about this event that the nurses had the wrong idea. He was just in the hospital room and, you know, he was kissing on his wife and maybe he was kind of kissing her in places, you know, that maybe they thought he was trying to get something. But Mary, on the other hand, uh, was telling people that Curtis was trying to get her to take her catheter out so he could do what he had to do. The scandal, child. The scandal. But, child, it gets weirder than that. Because Gossip also claims that while Mary Wells was in the hospital, she kind of fell in love with the doctor that was taking care of her. A young married man with a family. And she believed that this doctor loved her. As a matter of fact, Gossip claims that Mary Wells was keeping a radio without batteries beside her sleeping with it every night because she said the doctor would be able to like listen through the radio to make sure she was okay, um, you know, to hear her heartbeat, I guess. And then it's also Gossip out here that claims that whenever a helicopter rolled by her hospital window that she would say you know look see right there that's the doctor he's sending those helicopters to check on me listen at this mess said eventually uh the doctor ended up leaving the hospital he left he and his family moved to another state baby said when mary got out of the hospital she flew to the state that this doctor was in went into his office and told him that she wanted him to uh, leave his wife and come live with her. It's alleged that the doctor was floored and he told her, ma'am, I do not run off with my patients. That is not the kind of doctor that I am. Now, after Mary's initial uh, cancer diagnosis and when she was sick in the hospital, she ended up getting well enough to leave the hospital. And so she went back to doing all of these uh, interviews, all of these speeches and things like that, except this time when Whenever she did an interview or a speech, she would kind of break down crying about how she had given Motown, you know, all of these hits and that, you know, they kind of paid her chump change. How could Motown and Barry Gordy do her like this? Whereas Barry Gordy was rumored to have said in his private quarters that, you know, Mary Wells left me in freaking 1964. It is like 1990. Like, what's going on here? But nevertheless, gossip claims that Barry Gordy did indeed start to feel the heat because people started to look at him, you know, like, how could you do her like that? So, some rumors say that he offered Mary $1 million. Guess what they said Mary said? $1 million? What? After all of the hits that I gave you, you owe me $10 million. Baby said that Curtis was looking at the side of her head like, woman, are you crazy? No, you need to take the one million. Well, Gossip claims that Barry Gordy told her, like, now you get nothing. Again, that is alleged. I personally don't believe that rumor, but the rumor is out there. Whatever the case, Mary Wells ended up getting a lawyer and the lawyer ended up suing Barry Gordy and Motown. And the lawyer was victorious, but Gossip claims Claims that Mary probably didn't get any more than $100,000. Whatever the case, Mary Wells was happy to get something. She was happy to have some type of money and she knew that she wasn't going to be able to spend it, but she really wanted to get it for her kids and then send some money to that doggone doctor that she loved so much. Even though all of these rumors and these alleged tales are a hot mess, Mary Wells and Curtis did stay together until the end of her life and that happened on on July the 26th, 1992, when Mary Wells was 49 years old. And I really feel like we should have a movie on Mary Wells because I don't necessarily feel like she's forgotten, but I feel like people have forgotten that she really was the first queen of Motown. I feel like people have forgotten the stature that she held at Motown. But anyways, this is Ashley with Ashley Says So. I hope you guys enjoyed the Mary Wells story. If you did, go ahead and like and subscribe. And I will be back with another video soon. Bye.